Okay, astronomy, here we go. We're ready for astronomy. Let's do it. This is a little weird. Which one is a solar eclipse possible? I hope you guys can see this. Solar eclipse. Whatever's in the phrase is means, uh, that's what's being blocked out. The sun is being blocked out by the moon, so the moon has to be in the way. What would that be? Uh, that'd be this right here. That is where a solar eclipse is possible. Look at what I was doing with this one. I'm going to skip this. Don't worry about it. This, it shows, uh, which this is the spectral lines of, um, Spectral lines of an element that is uh, stationary, what would an element, the spectral lines, look like coming from space? Well, everything in space is moving away from us because of the Big Bang. So these lines should be shifted towards the red, the red side. Not violet, but red. So this is your answer. Things in space are moving away because the spectral lines are shifted towards the red. At the very least, know that and also know. You see this phrase, red shift? That is evidence the universe is expanding. Universe is expanding. Or... Proof of the Big Bang, either one of those. The red ship, know it. The, well, the chance of there being a question on it is high. High, 80% chance. Here we go, okay, let's say uh, this is the Earth, the moon at different, uh, um, at different locations in its revolution around the sun. Let's say you, they ask, what is the moon gonna look like for an observer on Earth? Uh, when the moon is at C. This is what I teach people. Do it. I don't see enough kids actually doing it. Draw this on your paper. It'll help you get it right. Okay, at C, what does it look like? I'm going to draw Fred right there. There's Fred looking up at it. What does he see? Could he see something on this side of the moon? No, he can't. He can draw a line in there that shows what he can see or, or a dividing line of what he can see. And the line would probably look like this. Okay? You just try to go through these lines right here. He looks up. And as he looks up, in this case, I have to turn my head. You should turn your paper, look up and say, is the sun uh, mostly, is the, sorry, is the moon mostly lit up, mostly dark, or half and half? Well, he looks up, it's mostly lit up when he sees what side is dark. For him, again, you turn your paper. I can't, I can't turn this whole board. Not yet. I can't turn the board yet. Working on it. Um, the right side is lit up, so what will it look like? I'm going to draw it right here. Hopefully you can see this. Uh, what did I say? Um, right side dark, left side lit up, looks like this. I know some of you are already saying, I know what that is. I know what that is. It's a waxing, no, you shouldn't be saying that because it's a waning gibbous, a waning gibbous moon. Do I write that in there? Uh, Waning gibbous. Where am I? A waning gibbous, and the left side is lit up. If you want to use the Burkonian method of the alphabet, the N is on the left, X is on the right, waxing and waning. That, I, think, I love that. Uh, I love that method, Bill. That's that's. This is shout out to you, Bill. That's great. Burkonian method, going down in history. Till next year, when something comes up with something better. But for now, history. That that. Serious. So, for instance, they show you some clouds. They guess they show you some stars. I'm sorry, and they ask you a simple question of Sirius. Tell me the color of Sirius and the temperature or approximate temperature. So you got to go here. You got to go. You got to go here. Page 15 of the reference table at the top. Uh, where's Sirius? Sirius is right here. What would the color be? Well, it's, it's a it's a white star. And what would the temperature be? Well, this is 10,500. A little less than 10,000, maybe 9,500. Let me go back and write that in. Color, what did I say? White. Temperature, uh, let's say around 9,500 degrees C, which is hot. Maybe not for a star, but for you and I, that's unbelievably hot. Unbelievable. Uh, this question, what do I got here? This question, talk, no, it's bigger. The uh, highest tides on Earth are going to occur when the moon is in what, what positions? High tide. So here's the sun, here's the moon. You get a high tide, it's also called spring tide, when the gravitational pull of the sun and the moon work together. So um, when they're kind of in, in a straight line, so it's gonna be at three and one, you're gonna have those really high, high tides and those really low, low tides because they're gravity. It's all working in a line, and uh, know that it's called spring tides. 
And this kind of shows it. I like this. This kind of shows that when you have the moon here, and in line with the sun, you look at you have you have your high tide kind of uh, high tides here, high tides here, low tides here. In a, in a reverse situation, not reverse, a different situation when the moon is over here, you have your high tide here, low tide here. And uh, yeah, no, the, the diagram is not really to scale, but the general gist. Hopefully, you'll get. I forget what I wanted to do with this. Um, I forget what I wanted to do with it. So we're going to skip it. Oh, here we go. Oh, call pendulum. Remember that video? I showed that video, uh, which I think really, really showed it quite well. What is it? You see folk call pendulum, and basically the pendulum stays in the same motion. It looks like it moves. And the reason is because the room, the earth, is rotating beneath it. Mind blowing. But you see full call pendulum. Full call pendulum is proof or evidence that proof Earth rotates. Chance of there being a question about Earth rotating is very high. Not sure why. New York State loves the proof of the, of the Earth rotating stuff. They love it. So between full call pendulum and I have another one. Oh, oh, I think I have it in there. The other one would be uh, other evidence that proof rotates. I know people are jumping up and down saying it right now. Not as exciting as this. Coriolis effect. That is how winds curve on Earth. Coriolis effect is also proof Earth rotates. Not as exciting as this. Know that as well, however. I'm going to stop right there here. Um, I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to see you next episode, which I bet is going to be geologic history, probably. See you in a little bit.